Okay, so those orbital resonances that I talked about um, have some interesting consequences. And this animation is, you know, flashing in colors every time there's a conjunction of planets. Um, and you'll notice, you know, if there's a conjunction, then those planets are near one another in space. And so they actually pull a little bit on one another gravitationally uh, at conjunction. And these repeated regular pulls actually cause the um, orbits to be slightly elliptical, where they would be much more perfectly circular otherwise. And so um, because of these orbital resonances and because of just that pattern of repeated um, gravitational pulling, uh, we end up with the possibility for tidal heating for the moons that are closest to Jupiter. So remember when we discussed tides that a tide is really just a, a differential uh, gravitational force across an object. So in the case of Earth, the moon pulls harder on the, on the close side of Earth than it does on the far side of the Earth. And this results in tidal forces on the Earth that move water around on its surface. Um, so this same type of you know, differential force can also cause objects to stretch out into an oblong shape. So Io is stretched into an oblong shape by the tidal force of Jupiter. And furthermore, um, the part of the, of the bulge that's facing Jupiter wobbles as it um, orbits, uh, partly because of the eccentricity of its orbit. This is much more eccentric, by the way, than the orbit actually is, but partly because of these repeated pulls from uh, Ganymede and Europa. And so uh, those or uh, twisting and flexing of the, um, of the whole moon cause it to be heated. So that twisting and flexing, uh, you know, it's kind of like bending a wire over and over, it gets warm. Uh, the friction is generated in the interior. And so Io and Europa um, and Ganymede are all heated by this tidal heating mechanism.